first point to you is that if it comes to the economy, the data bears us out that we manage the economy pretty well. And it's because we manage it well that we are now able to afford all the education interventions that we have. Look what we've done with TVET. You've seen the new TVET institutions. And you have seen it that we've gone into the TVET institutions. You can only do it when you run the economy well so that you can afford those things. Data on Ghana's economy, 2012 to 2024. And show you the success, the challenges, the consequences, and then I'll land on where my colleagues were talking about. Even the future of the Ghanaian economy is better. And what it means, therefore, is that we can afford the things we are promising and some more. You are teachers, so you are familiar with definition of concepts and frameworks. Sometimes you switch on radio and you hear somebody talking about the economy, and if you understand the economy, you end up asking, but does this person really understand? But you can understand it because. Um, people pick various parts of a concept and try to extrapolate from that to define the concept. You are teachers. Today, I'm happy to hear the comments that have been made that 91% of areas have been cleared. Those who are on the three month pay policy, all of that has been paid. Um, all of these interventions, it's all about who can run the economy in such a way that they can pay for it. So, I want to quickly show you some data on Ghana's economy 2012 to 2024 and show you the successes, show you the, 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 the challenges consequences and then I'll land on where my colleagues were talking about the future. Even the future of the Ghanaian economy is better. And what it means therefore is that we can afford the things we are promising and some more. You are teachers, so you are familiar with definition of concepts and frameworks. Sometimes you switch on radio and you hear somebody talking about the economy and if you understand the economy, you end up asking, but does this person really understand what he's talking about? But you can understand it because um, People pick various parts of a concept and try to extrapolate from that to define the concept. You are teachers. You are assessing a student. If somebody listens to a student who is supposed to answer one question in mathematics. And because you can't answer that question in mathematics, somebody goes away and says, this student is a poor student. Numeracy mm -hmm. skills are important, but for a student, I believe assessment of a student is more than just the numeracy skills. True or false? Yeah. So sometimes we talk about the economy, and you hear somebody pick, let's say, one thing, taxes, and say that taxes are high, so the economy is bad. But you know that's not true, right? Yeah. Or somebody picks, uh, in fact, today I was listening to the former president. He, uh, he was talking about um, uh, something here on exchange rate. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that that means that the economy is bad. But you understand that when you're talking about the economy, there are multiple things you want to look at. You want to look at how is the economy growing and creating jobs? How is um, the fiscal program being managed in such a way that you can now afford to take away the three-month pay policy here and now pay everybody for the number of months that they've worked? And you can afford to uh, you know, fund uh, BC for um, you know, public school students. And you can afford to fund all the interventions that you are talking about. That's somewhere here. But it's about the broader economy. So there are many things in it. If you want to see how healthy the economy is, you've got to look at the total picture. If you want to see how well your student is performing, you don't just score him on his ability to memorize a concept. What is rainfall? One of my teachers in school said, rainfall is anything that is, 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 is any liquid that is coming from the sky. <laughs> you, don't, you don't judge how good a student is by his ability to memorize what is rain or what is rainfall. It's the totality of an assessment. Now, I submit to you in all humility that the data shows clearly that the FPP, even in the midst of crisis, is always a better manager of the Canadian economy. And therefore, can afford we are measuring the economy, there are usually some parameters that uh, we use. So this is like our terminal reports, like what we are producing for the students. So maybe this is our uh, literacy, numeracy, uh, you know, application, problem solving, all of those um, uh, uh, skills that you are measuring in a student to determine whether that student is good or not. How the economy grows is very important because it's the growth that determines, for example, jobs, um, the development that will come from it. Um, Debt. You know, you, sometimes you switch on your radio and somebody will say, hey, the Ghanaian economy, debt. Uh, in fact, at the, the, the conversation I was listening to, is this debt has moved from 100 billion CDs 
to 600 million cities, so it means the economy is bad. Dr. Kwame, I should come explain. <laughs> First of all, debt, we don't measure debt in nominal terms, in CD nominal terms, mm -hmm. because um, debt has to be measured as compared to wealth. So if, if um, you are the head teacher of a financial review basic school and the school owes a supplier 1,000 cities, it's a big problem. Because for us at a financial review basic school, to get 1,000 cities to go and pay that money, it's a problem. But if you are the head teacher of Bishop Powers and Bishop Powers owes 1,000 cities, is it the same? No. Because if you look at for example, the fees they are charging and the revenue. So debt is never looked at in nominal terms. We look at debt as a percentage of your wealth. Yeah. But sometimes you hear the propaganda out there. Take inflation, the rate at which prices of goods and services are increasing. So if you look across the parameters of the Ghanaian economy, you can tell that the MPP, true to our promise, we manage the economy well. And I submit to you know, even in the midst of crisis. So take the rate at which the Ghanaian economy was growing. This is what President Mills of blessed memory left President Mahama. The economy was growing at 9.3. In fact, that 9.3 had dropped from 14 of 2011. 2011 was when we produced first oil. So there was a new addition to the layers of the Ghanaian economy to 14%. President Mills left President Mahama 9.7. Look at what President Mahama did. No global crisis, no Major problems around the world. He started dropping it 7.3, brought it down to 2.9, brought it down to 2.1. It was in 2016 when the IMF. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Take uh, public debt. President Mills left him 35.4% of GDP. What it means that the total wealth of the country, if our creditors came and said they wanted their money, it will take 35.4% of our total productivity for the year for us to pay our debt. No global crisis. No major social intervention programs that he had to fund. No issues around the West African sub-region that we want. Which one is that? Buying of cars for girls. <laughs> 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 I'm not from that one. That one the means this. I'm not from that one. The whole major crisis around the world that he had to fund. Look at it. He took debt from 35.4% of GDP and started blowing it. 42.6. This is when we started asking him that. But all this borrowing you are doing, there's no crisis that you are trying to solve. And there's not really much evidence around you. There are no big programs you are doing that we can see you are spending the money on. And the rate at which you are going, you may have to go to the island to bail out. And he said, We're talking balloon at the time. Look at it 35.4, he moved it to 42.6. The blood pressure was going at 50.1, 54.6, Look at inflation. President Mills left him 8.8%. The rate at which the prices of goods and services were increasing. Just one year, 13.5. By the second year, he has almost doubled the rate at which prices were increasing. He picked eight. He was now at 17. 17 again. It's when the IMF came in 2016. They were helping him even that one. You remember at the point the IMF stopped giving his best money to him because he wasn't meeting the program target. Even that one look at him. There are several parameters I can show to you. But in 2016, when we were campaigning, we made promises to the people of Ghana about the economy. We said we'll go from taxation to productivity, we'll grow the Ghanaian economy, we'll create jobs, we'll make money from the Ghanaian economy so that we can fund social intervention programs, like some of the things we've spoken to you about. Uh, you know, it could be something like free SHS, be able to pay the allowances that they had. That all of this, they were even cutting social intervention programs at the time, saying that they can't pay allowances saying that they can't pay you more than three months as teachers if you are recruited, etc., etc. Now, when we came in 2017, true to our way, we started taking away about 17 taxes, introducing policies that would grow the Ghanaian economy, like the one district, one factory program, like the planting for food and jobs program. And if anybody tells you that it didn't bear food, it's not true. The data bears it out. Growth, we paid 3.4. Mills left him 9.3. He brought it down to 3.4. 
In one year, because of the policies we introduced, we moved it to 8.1. If we did that 2016, we were going to We said in 2016 that we were going to double growth. At the time, we were thinking of 3.5. We were thinking we would end at 3.5. If we double it, it will be 7. We did the first year 8.1, second year 6.2, third year 6.5. The Ghanaian economy was now back on a certain trajectory, was growing because we put in place the policies to grow the economy. But you notice in the fourth year, 2020, 0.5, I will come to it. Take public debt. Sometimes when you listen to radio and TV, they create the impression that, oh, the problem is the government borrowed too much. That's the problem. I've told you that debt is measured as a percentage of your wealth. So the fact that, of course, here you be senior high school went to borrow thousand cities. It's not the same as Bishop Bowers went to borrow thousand cities. We've discussed that already. You measure it as compared to the wealth of Bishop Bowers and of course here in senior high school. So this is the comparison to the wealth. He left 55.6. We were sitting at 56.1 the first year, 57.9 the second year. By 2019, because of something I explained to you, we shot up to 65.9. Even all of this was not in debt, history. there was no problem with it. The IMF didn't complain. The standard and force movies, they all didn't complain. It was in 2020 that we hit a problem. So my first point to you is that if it comes to the economy, the data bears us out that we manage the economy pretty well. And it's because we managed it well that we were now able to afford all the education interventions that we brought. Look at what we've done with TVET. You've seen the new TVET institutions. And it's similar that we've brought into the TVET institutions. 